Hello and welcome to the Daily Post. It's the 10th of August today and we've got some scriptures and thoughts and ideas for you to help you through the day. We begin with as usual with the scripture from Isaiah today, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. A well-known scripture, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Wonderful verse. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we need to move on through Psalms 79 and 80 and Romans chapter 11, verses 1 to 18. The thoughts of the day. The men who try to do something and fail are infinitely better than those who try to do nothing and succeed. The way I see it, if you want a rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. People travel to wonder at the height of mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, at the long courses of river, at the vast compass of the ocean, at the circular motion of the stars, and they pass by themselves without wondering. Thinking about motivation for today, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of it. And on this day, in 1675, on this day, King Charles II of England laid the foundation stone for the Royal Observatory at Greenwich in South East London. And of course, that's where we get Greenwich Mean Time from, which is the uh, central measure of time. In 1889, on this day, Englishman Dan Rylands of Hope Glassworks in Barnsley, Yorkshire, patented the screw top bottle. In 1897, on this day, German chemist Felix Hoffmann first synthesized acetyl salicylic acid, which would later be patented by his company Bayer under the name aspirin. It's interesting to know that the same acid is also part of deep heat. In 1932, the Lego Group was founded in Billund in Denmark by Ole Kirk Christensen. The name is a contraction of the Danish words leg got, which is to play well in English. In 1966, on this day, the launch of Orbiter 1, the first United States lunar satellite. And in 1972, a 1 million kilogram meteorite grazed the atmosphere above Canada. It's a bit fortunate it didn't come any closer. In 1990, on this day, the Magellan space probe was inserted into orbit around Venus and then landed on Venus. In 2017, on this day, a 100-year-old fruitcake made by Huntley and Palmer's was deemed, quote, almost eatable, unquote, after being discovered in a hut used by Captain Scott's expedition to Antarctica. The personal story of the day. What kind of kind person are you? Aldous Huxley who lived from 1894 to 1963, was one of the world's leading intellects, and he was visiting with Houston Smith, a well-known professor of philosophy and religion. As they were driving to an engagement, Huxley said, You know, Houston, it's rather embarrassing to have spent one's entire lifetime pondering the human condition and find that I really don't have anything more profound to pass on by way of advice than, quote, try to be a little kinder, unquote. The Apostle Paul saw kindness in a different light. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, he linked being kind, tender-hearted and forgiving with the way God has treated us. In Titus chapter 3 and verse 4, he said that it was, quote, the kindness and the love of God, unquote, 
that provided eternal salvation. In a world where callous thoughtlessness and selfish indifference are all too common, kindness can make our lives fruitful when motivated by Christ-like love. When our walk harmonises with our words of witness, it will make a compelling impact on others by pointing them to the kind of love that God has for them in Jesus Christ. If Huxley had learned what Paul had learned, he would have seen that trying to be a little kinder is one of the most profound truths of all. What motivates us to try? There's no better reason than the love of God as shown to us by Christ's sacrifice and love. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, the pleasure of leisure. The scripture is from Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 10 with references from Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them, I withheld not my heart from any joy. Estimates of Bill Gates' worth range from $130 billion upwards. His house is about one and a half acres of total living space, about 6,000 square metres of living space. And he continues to work feverishly to improve his business. Microsoft recently dedicated $19.3 billion alone for research and development. Who can imagine being so wealthy, let alone the prospect of getting richer? If we were to compare any of our lives to Bill Gates' life, we probably wouldn't expect to find much in common. And that can be our reaction when we read today's verses as well. It's easy to imagine the life of a king as some distant, fantastic dreamland that bears no resemblance to our own. But a closer look at this passage reveals a striking similarity to the life of a typical, everyday person, just carried out to an extreme degree. Verse 13 summarises the search for good in life through selfless measures, and verses 4 to 8 show the details of the three main categories of the search, projects, possessions, and pleasures. The projects described here don't seem to resemble an ongoing job or trade as much as leisure projects. The house building, tree planting, and reservoir construction in Ecclesiastes might correspond to a new shed, some tomatoes, and a sprinkler system in our backyard on a grander scale than we're used to, certainly, but the intended result of personal enjoyment is still the same. Although we can't identify with the amount or even the nature of possessions listed in verses 7 and 8, everyone at one time or another has bought something with the hope that it would make life a bit more enjoyable. The pleasures listed in, listed in verse 8 also appear quite foreign to us, but the phrase that ends the verse should be quite familiar, the delights of the sons of men. Our culture is fascinated by delighting ourselves with entertainment. If you ever take in a television show, a movie, a sporting event or a concert, if you enjoy anything from an ice cream cone to a nice hot bath, you've experienced the heart of this passage. The question is, does any of it bring real contentment? Can you say, as verse 9 does, that your wisdom has stayed with you through it all? It's far too easy to use up our leisure time without thinking seriously about what we're doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. The second thought, keeping them safer. The scripture from Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. All of us want to keep our children safe from things that will harm them. We teach them never to talk to strangers, never to take lollies from anyone they don't know. And it's for their protection. 
We teach them all about fire safety and wearing seatbelts, and the world keeps piling on things that will harm our children even more, and it's getting harder and harder to keep them from the unwanted evils in this life. Undoubtedly, some of the children will indeed come across things that we wouldn't approve, but hopefully they've been taught enough that these things will not make a bearing on their mind. In other words, we hope we've taught them right from wrong, what to pay attention to and what to discard. The radio was never a factor in teaching children bad habits. When I was young, we listened to some music, a few nighttime stories, all censored by our parents. Then came the television. We didn't have one permanently until I was in year seven. By that time, we knew right from wrong and what was expected of us. We also knew what our parents approved of for our viewing. We only had three local channels, so there wasn't too much of a choice. We also went to bed early, 8 to 8.30. So there was no danger in watching late night shows. The television went off at a decent hour. It was not on 24 hours a day. We now not only have local channels, but cable and satellite. There are so many varied packages, it's hard to keep count anymore. They range from all sports packages to all show packages, both good and bad. The shows now, even the themes in them that I wasn't allowed to hear and was only in X-rated movies. So it's not easy for a parent to just let a child watch television anymore. One has to be very careful in picking out a program. Some of the nicest shows still have a bad word in them or two. There's no getting around entertainment. Then there comes this thing we call a computer. It's all equipped to play music, even to watch movies and the internet on which you interact with other people. There are all kinds of sites from the best to the worst, from the clean to the nasty. There's also the choice of chat rooms for both young and old. So there are many avenues down which an unexpecting child can go if he or she is turned loose on this thing called the internet. And don't believe just because you have taught your child about all these things to be aware of that they won't investigate it. It's a child's nature to want to know about these things, that we teach them some are bad for them. But we pray that we have taught our children in a way that, if they are subjected to some of the online smut that appears unexpectedly at times, they will have the knowledge and strength to want to pass up those sites again. We can't make our children do right, but we can place within them the fear and respect of God and we teach them what his word says about such things. And we pray that their mind registered all this in as a warning that to do these things is a sin and that they don't want to continually sin. We pray these things regularly. Praise the Lord. The facts of the day. The Guinness Book of Records holds the record for being the book most stolen from public libraries. Termites eat wood twice as fast when they listen to heavy metal music. The, the closing thought, Lord, thank you for the wise words of others that help me to be a better saint. Thank you for joining us today. We do hope you'll find the Daily Post useful and helpful and uh, that you'll join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.